Welcome to Game From A Box, this is Sergio AM, and on this 14th Nintendo Switch hauled episode, we're taking a look at 10 of the latest controllers, cases, adapters, and more, including stuff that we may have missed before. Here we go. Not everyone loves the D-pad, but to this day, the Pro Controller is still one of our favorite full-featured gamepads for the Switch. Now, when we take it on the go, we just toss it in our bag, but in there, it bounces around, which can damage it, and each time the buttons and analog sticks are activated, it can turn it on, which leads to battery drain. So, to defend against that, we found this armor case by TomTalk. Like most of their stuff, it's simple in design and really well-made. It's built of Germany Bayer polycarbonate, which we of course know is a high quality sturdy plastic and it's in this transparent smoky color. It's held shut with this very secure red buckle clip and the Pro Controller pops right in with a perfect fit. So much so that it's not compatible with thumb grips, so you'll have to remove them or squeeze them in along the side. Then you just close and lock it up. In here, it looks great. It's very thin profile, which barely adds any bulk. And like their carrying cases, it has these spacious slots that give the buttons and analog sticks room to breathe, which helps avoid waking them and draining the battery. But more importantly, it's been military grade tested to protect against damage and drops. If that's not enough, at the top, we have a handy cutout so we can access the USB-C port for charging. Very nice. And there's also a lanyard hole on the bottom right if you're into that kind of thing. So if you want to keep your Pro Controller safe when you travel or even to just safely store it, we can easily recommend TomTalk's armor case. Before we continue, this episode is brought to you by our friends over at Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. These are two monthly subscription boxes that come packed with a ton of Japanese snacks. They're similar yet very different experiences. Tokyo Treat is a quirky and adventurous Japanese snack box that consists of limited edition and exclusive snacks made up of unique chips, drinks, candy, things like that. And Sakura Co. has a more traditional vibe that takes you on a journey with these artisan, authentic snacks made up of tea, sweets, and more, all from local makers, and there's also home goods. This month, Tokyo Treat's theme is the foodie's paradise, Shibuya, with items such as a lot of pudding-flavored Kit Kats, a lemonade flavored puku puku thai, and our favorite, the odd but tasty caramel popcorn soda that my daughter could not stop drinking. Then for Sakura, we have a taste of Hokkaido theme that has items like their super soft and puffy milk bell castellas, a delicious mandarin yogurt jelly, and my other daughter's favorite, a shrimp sembe that's a little strange but oddly addicting. Also, this month's home goods item is this elegant looking four season soup bowl. There's way more that we couldn't cover, but my family and I adore these boxes. They're one of the things we look forward to the most each month. So if you like what you see here and want to treat yourself, click the links down in the description below and use our code ICFAB to get $5 off your first box. We couldn't ask for better sponsors. These are brands we really love and we hope you feel the same. So check out Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co because supporting them helps support us. If you're like me and can't stand installing a screen protector, then you're going to love this one by Sibbies? Sibbies? For the Switch OLED. It comes with the usual suspects to clean the screen before installation, bonus decals to help protect the back of the console, and the tempered glass screen protector, but with one big trick up its sleeve. It's built into this frame that easily snaps right on with a perfect fit. No worrying about bubbles, and if there's any debris, you just take it off, clean it, and snap it back on. Now, not only does it protect the screen, but also the bezel and the edges of the console with cutouts for the speakers and vents, along with the buttons and ports at the top. On here, the power button is very recessed, so you're going to have to reach for it. The volume rocker buttons are covered but work well. The headphone jack is also recessed, but note that it may not have enough clearance for thicker plugs. And it's got an indent in front of the game slot for easy access. Touch still works the same, no issue there. The rails aren't blocked so you can easily remove or attach Joy-Cons and other controllers. But because of that slight addition to the dimensions, it's not going to work with protective cases that have a perfect fit, although it may work with flexible ones. And it's also not dock compatible, but you can just pop it off for that use and reattach it when you're done. Honestly, I can't believe it took this long to come up with something this simple. So if you don't have a screen protector on your Switch OLED, this is a no-brainer. I can highly recommend it, but I'd love to see them release versions for the original Switch and Switch Lite. 
We checked out all sorts of game cases in the past, but none as unique as this set by Retro Fighters, a brand dedicated to making nostalgic-inspired gaming accessories. In the box, we have this big case that holds eight small cases designed to look like NES cartridges. A bit tough to take out, but they're very adorable. Lots of detail and even textured. At the top, we have a slot for the Switch cartridge. They pop right in, and at the bottom, there's a clip that clicks it into place. They're not locked into place. That clip is just to help with ejection, but the fit is snug enough so you don't have to worry about them falling out by mistake. Once inside, it looks incredible, just like an NES cartridge. Anyways, uh, like I said, you get eight in this set, and you can pack them in this case to take on the go. But personally, I prefer to display them on the desk with games that I'm currently playing through since they look so awesome and make for great conversation pieces. So if like me, you're a sucker for nostalgia, I don't think you have a choice. You gotta check these out. A while back, we checked out Gully Kit's well-made and feature-packed King Kong Pro Controller, but now they're back with the King Kong 2 Pro, and although it looks similar, it's got some big upgrades on the inside. The design, layout, and buttons are identical to the first, but let's talk about what's new. This time around, we've got a long 25-hour battery life. The plastic feels much better in hand, and we now have textured grips on the back. The face buttons are the same low-profile design but sit on their custom switches that are very durable with an insane lifespan. They work well, reset quickly, but do feel slightly sticky. We now have clicky L and R buttons that actuate nicely all throughout. Then we have buttery smooth analog sticks that manages what Nintendo don't, that being their anti-drift. That's because instead of parts that grind and wear down with time, these utilize a magnetic contactless sensor which avoids the wear and tear altogether and there's really no compromise. Over a month in use and it's worked very precisely, we haven't experienced any jumps or missed inputs and it feels just as it did on day one. Aside from that new tech, same as the original, it's packed with more features than any other third-party controller out there. I'll list them on the screen but some of the highlights, we have highly accurate motion controls, along with their adjustable motion sense aim assist with three levels of sensitivity activated by either the L or ZL buttons, but because they emulate the right stick, it's also compatible with games that don't support motion controls. Their macro recording is one of the best out there that can record up to a staggering 10 minutes of accurate gameplay, which is perfect for repetitive tasks. And it also has turbo with two modes, one that activates when you hold down the designated button, or two, which just repeats the button input until you stop it. There's so much more to it, it's honestly one of the most capable third-party controllers for the Switch. They're very proud of what they made here, and rightly so. There's a lot of thought put into just about every feature here, all of which work incredibly well. As much as I love physical games, the convenience of quickly accessing digital games, especially for those spontaneous multiplayer moments, is hard to beat. So much so that we finally upgraded to a massive one terabyte in this itty bitty size from Lexar's Playline. There's a handful of trusted brands making them at this capacity. Most should be compatible, but make sure they're UHS-1 since the Switch doesn't support anything past that. When we first set it up, it took about a day to download everything with a hardwired connection, but it would have taken much longer over Wi-Fi, so if you don't have an OLED dock, consider picking up an Ethernet adapter for yours. As of now, we've crammed a little over 160 games in it, and we still have about 349 gigs left on the card. So for most people, it'll be future-proof until at least the next version of the Switch comes out, and even then, you can also use this with other devices. So the question is, do you need this? Unless you're already low on storage on a high-capacity card, it definitely falls under the luxury category, but I love not worrying about running out of space. And thinking back to when I was a kid carrying multiple Game Boy cartridges, there's something mind-blowing about having this many games accessible on the fly at your fingertips. With the release of the N64 games on the Nintendo Switch Online Expansion Pack, Nintendo went a step further with a re-release of their iconic, futuristic-looking N64 controller, but with a few upgrades. It's about the same size as the original and even feels identical in hand. It's just as odd as I remember it, albeit a bit heavier because it's now wireless with a rechargeable battery. Quality is top notch, the buttons feel great, very responsive, the analog stick is pretty stiff but easy to control, let's hope it stays that way, and sadly, there's no expansion port. It's sealed off, which means you won't be able to use your old rumble or expansion packs with it, but it does have rumble built in for compatible games, and you can use suspend points to save your game. As for what's new, at the top, we now have a USB-C port for charging, buttons for sync, capture and home, ZR to access the suspend menu, 
but there's no X, Y, plus, or minus buttons, and you can't even remap it, which makes it incompatible or at least difficult to use with most other Switch games. So compared to awkwardly using the Joy-Cons or Pro Controller, this is by far the best way to experience these games. Now, is it worth it? As a nostalgic collector whose childhood was heavily impacted by the N64, it's a yes for me, but because it's tied to the pricey NSO expansion pack where you don't own the games, along with a few other issues, as much as I love it, it's hard to recommend for most people. Hori is back with the latest version of their popular controller. This is the Hori Pad Plus. It's a very lightweight wired gamepad with a long 10-foot cable and a few additional features. Same as the original, it's pretty well made and feels good in hand. It's got those smoothly textured curvy grips. The analog sticks are coated in a smooth rubber that makes them easy to move around and click in. The D-pad works great, same for the face buttons. The shoulder buttons actuate easily throughout. The triggers feel like bouncy paddles that also work well. And we have rubber buttons for plus, minus, home, and capture. Finally, on the back above the grips, we have two buttons that you can use along with a function button to adjust the analog stick sensitivity on the fly as well as remap to any other on here. Down the center, we have this area that shows you all our LEDs for all those modes. And under there, we have a headphone jack to use with the Switch compatible headsets, buttons for on the fly turbo with adjustable speed, microphone mute with an LED, and our function button. Now there's no rumble, which is a bummer, but it does have motion controls that instead of a gyro uses their motion aim, which acts as a right stick. And that makes it so it can work with games that don't support motion controls. With the function button, you can adjust the sensitivity from one to three, and you have a switch on the back to toggle between using the controller in either vertical or horizontal positions. Also, if you don't want it on the entire time, you can use it on the fly by assigning it to one of the paddle buttons to toggle it on for specific moments. So in use, it's not as precise as the Joy-Cons or Pro Controller. There's moments when it just seems off, so you'll have to get used to it, but I appreciate the ability to add motion aiming to games that don't support it. Then, if that's all too much, don't worry, you can just turn it off. Overall, it's a solid wired gamepad with a unique take on motion controls and a few other useful features with a steep learning curve, so keep the manual handy. You know we're big fans of Skull & Co here. We have just about every version of their cases and with them a ton of grips, which we've really grown attached to. But now you can use them in TV or tabletop mode by attaching them to their Joy-Con grip or as they call it, Joy Grip. It comes in a few colors, either bundled with grips or just the body itself, which we went with since we already have a collection of grips. The Joy-Cons slide right in, perfect fit. We have player notification lights in the middle, a lanyard loop down here, and a USB-C port at the top so you can charge and play. I also want to mention that construction is top notch. It doesn't feel cheap at all. It's precisely made with smooth and textured plastic. Really nice. Then for the main feature, over on the back, we have their grip rail system, which you can slide any of their latest grips onto. You can mix and match them however you'd like, and whether they're low profile or the biggest they've got, there's enough space here that all of them feel good in hand, and it's one of the best feeling Joy-Con grips we've tested. If you love fighting in arcade games as much as we do, it's about time you upgrade to a fight stick. If you're looking for a place to start, check out this Fusion Arcade Stick by Power A. It's portable, but with full size stick and buttons, decent weight, the build quality is top notch, mostly plastic, but with a chunky metal base, and it stays in place with four rubber feet. On the front, behind these six screws, we have a removable faceplate with a red insert that you can swap out for the included black fusion design or add your own custom artwork using their downloadable template. Pop in two double A's and hit the power switch for a wireless 30 hour connection that so far we've experienced little to no noticeable input lag with. But if you don't wanna risk it, behind this compartment, we have a long 10 foot USB-C to USB-A cable to use it wired and the best part, it's not permanently attached, so if it stops working, you can just swap it out for another instead of replacing the entire unit. On the top left here, we have plus, minus, capture, and home buttons, a player notification LED, and a stick switch to toggle between D-pad and left or right stick. Sadly, there's no additional features like turbo or button mapping. In use, the actuation on the buttons is clicky like a Cherry MX keyboard switch, they're also stiff, which can wear you out after a few hours, but so far, every input's registered just fine. The ball top stick is on an octagon gate, and like the buttons, you can feel every direction, no issues there. Then, if you're looking to customize the parts, it's easy enough to get into, there's also labels for the buttons, and nothing is soldered, so you don't have a problem there. So, if you're looking for a fight stick and don't know where to start, this is definitely a solid, versatile option to begin with. Amiibos are great, but they're not easy to travel with. 
Our solution for that is the Flask by Bloop Labs. It's an NFC tag emulator that you can use in all sorts of NFC ways, but here specifically, we're using it for Amiibo. It has this cool open design that you're going to want to keep far away from the granola bars. On the front, we have a backlit screen to select your NFC tag, and this is one of their limited edition designs in yellow with this kind of mad scientist in a 30s art style that I love the look of. It turns on with this tiny switch up top, and you then set it up via Bluetooth on their web portal to both update the firmware and add up to 75 NFC tags. Once you're done, you simply select the one you want, scan the back, and bingo, SkyMeet delivered. Love this little guy, it's incredibly useful, and if you're looking to get your hands on one, just know that Bloop Labs is a small operation, so they only make a few batches of these every once in a while, but they were awesome enough to send us this very rare gold and shiny version to give away to one of you. So for a chance at this one, first follow them on Instagram at Bloop Labs, we'll have a link in the description, and then comment below telling us how you'd use it along with the hashtag SkyMeet. Then on June 3rd, we'll announce the winner on Instagram and Twitter. And that covers every single piece of Switch gear out there. No, no, it doesn't. That was a, a bad joke. We already have another 10 ready to go. So subscribe because that episode is now in the works. As someone who's into this weird niche, I want to thank all of you for watching. So do me a favor and please let me know what you think of this stuff down in the comments below. Let's talk. Also, if you're looking to pick up anything featured and want to support us at the same time, please check out the affiliate links down in the description below. Once again, this is Sergio IM. Thanks for liking and subscribing, and I'll see you for the next box. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to help us out, you can do so by clicking that thumbs up button. And while you're at it, why not subscribe for more content? It's free. We also love to hear you out, so please leave a comment down below or talk with us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I'm Sergio IM, and I'll see you for the next box.